and welcome to this month's synth tutorial with Computer Music. In this month's tutorial, we're going to be using the Zebra CM to create a clocking synth. This synth is inspired by the band and duo called Plaid. One of their tracks called Clock makes extensive use of clocking within the door. So we're drawing inspiration from that patch and creating something very similar with our own Zebra CM. So begin by opening up a copy of your door and load in the Zebra CM plugin. We're going to begin by initializing our patch. And we do this by going to the menu and display, which is right at the top of the plugin. If you do a left click on this, you will see init at the bottom for initialize. Select that, and this will initialize the plugin for you. The patch we're going to create is going to be a relatively loud patch, so we're going to begin by turning down our master volume. Go down to the bottom right hand side of the plugin, where you'll see the master output. Click and hold on this, and drag this down until you see a value in the upper display that says 30, that's 30. Just a little reminder that every time you make an alteration to any of the parameters on the plugin, you'll see a numeric displayed in the upper display, and that's what we'll be referring to most of the time. Now let's start creating our sound, and we do this by going over to the oscillator section, which is on the top left hand side. Beginning with oscillator number 1, we want to turn the volume down to a value of 70. We also want to induce some aliasing to thicken up the sawtooth waveform that we have by default. So visiting the upper section of the oscillator, you'll see that there are four numbers. We want to select four, which means we'll have four aliased waveforms. Now move across to the detune pot and set that to a value of minus three. This detunes the aliased waveforms so that they're not all piled one on top of another, creating a phasing effect. And to thicken our texture even more, we're going to visit the pan, which is directly below the volume of oscillator one, and set that all the way to the left hand side. Next we're going to visit oscillator 2 and make some very similar adjustments. Let's begin with the volume control and set that also to a value of 70. We also want to leave this set to a sawtooth because we're playing with the whole super saw concept for this patch. But we want to thicken up that texture even further, so we do this by going to the aliasing section and selecting the upper value of 11. With so many aliased waveforms we need to detune these more heavily, so moving to the detune control Set that to a value of 7. And finally, go to the panning pot for oscillator 2 and pan that all the way hard right. Having made those alterations, we should now hear a sound like this. And you can hear that's very thick and super sawtastic. Having set the basics for both oscillators, we now need to change the octave of oscillator 2. And we do this by going to the tune pot, which is directly above the sawtooth icon. Set this to a value of plus 12. The 12 relates to the number of semitones, and there are 12 semitones to an octave, so oscillator 2 is going to be playing exactly one octave higher than oscillator 1. You should immediately hear that this now sounds a little bit brighter. Now we begin to sculpt our sound using the filter, and we want a relatively abrasive filter for this particular patch, so going to the filter section and the drop down menu, we're going to select low pass 6 dB. While we're here, we'll also change our cutoff value to a value of 75. That's roughly the same as the 12 o'clock position. Now, as you can hear at the moment, our pad sounds like this. It's a relatively dull super saw pad. The whole purpose of what we're going to be doing is using some modulation coming from the LFO to modulate the filter. This will create a pulsing and beating pattern, which is generated exclusively from the LFO. In order to ensure that the modulation is going in the right direction, go to the assignable pot which is at the lower part of the filter section. You'll see that there's a pot here with M2 written underneath it. We want to change that to LFO1. Once selected, change the pot value to a value of 115. Now we'll hear something that sounds like this. And you can hear the beating concept is already starting to come into play. At the moment, the LFO is generating that sine wave pattern that's heading towards the filter. We want something with a more definite front to it. So moving to the LFO section, look for the waveform drop down and select saw down. This should now immediately sound like this. It's important at this stage to ensure that the rate pot remains at a value of 100 in the 12 o'clock position. And you can also see that we have a value of eighth note set in the sync box. Leave those as they are. Finally, for this patch, we want to move to the envelope one section. 
Envelope 2 isn't being used anywhere, so this is largely redundant. You'll find that most of these settings for Attack Decay Sustain Release are as they should be, but just to check, Attack is set to 0, Decay is set to 50, Sustain is set to 80, and Release, which is the only one that should need changing, we need to set to a value of 30. We should hear a sound that sounds like this. And you can hear the sawtooth definitely affecting the filter and giving us that relentless pulse. So the final part of this patch actually isn't related to the Zebra itself, it's related to your door. We're going to be using automation within the door to change the tempo and the timing of the LFO rate. We do this by keeping it in sync, so make sure that you select Zebra CM Sync from your automation and then start drawing in values that relate to the timing. This then means that when you program in your timings you should get a result that sounds a little bit like this. So what you're hearing there is the chords which I've already played and then I've written the automation over the top. Notice that I've varied the automation so that every time I get a change in value it corresponds with the beginning of a bar. You could change that as I have done at the end here where you get a slightly more impulsive effect It'll take a little bit of practice to get the exact result you want, but that's the thing with automation of this kind. It's worth experimenting to find the exact sweet spot that really chimes with your track. That's it for this month. We're clocking out.